The story begins with a man who forcefully brings his girlfriend to a famous fame club where all of the richest people of Dongling lounge together. The boy suddenly meets up with a man named Ye Baiming and introduces his girlfriend to him. To this, his girlfriend gets confused and demands for an answer, but the man refuses to listen to her and hands her over to Mr. Baiming, the man lounging in a black suit, smoking peacefully and looking completely stunning. Mr. Baming thought it was a joke, but was surprised to see that this man was ready to give up his beautiful girlfriend for a few millions. The man pushes the pink-haired girl, and she falls on Mr. Baming's lap, to which he says, enjoy, and leaves the two alone. The girl named Coco requests him to let her go, and that she wasn't the type of girl to seduce anyone, but Mr. Baming got turned on because of her escaping behavior and wanted her to stay. Not knowing his power, Coco warned him that if he did anything to her, she will sue him. To which he said that the whole dongling belongs to him, but if she is able to walk out of the nightclub, he will spare her. Hearing this, she ran towards to the exit, but saw her boyfriend with another woman. She was the shoes company's secretary. Coco got aggressive and demanded for an explanation, to which his boyfriend Sho Yang responded to her rudely and accused her for pretending to play innocent all the time. The man tried to hold her down and the secretary slapped Coco so badly that she fainted and dragged Coco back to Mr. Baming. Mr. Baming offered her a drink to calm herself, but she refused to, which he forced the drink down her throat and asked her to serve him if she needs assistance in getting revenge. Coco wanted to confirm and to which he guaranteed that he never breaks his promises. As soon as he was finished with his words, he approached Coco again and tried to use force against her will, to which she quickly decided to change her mind and called it quits. But Mr. Baming wasn't ready to accept it. According to him, once a deal is made, it shouldn't be broken so easily. One must have to pay for it. Coco was so terrified that she fainted right at that moment, to which Mr. Baming felt pity on her and left her alone. The next morning, Coco woke up in Mr. Byming's bed and saw a female servant standing right in front of her. She was ordering her to get up and get dressed as if she was some filthy lady who was ready to sleep with anyone for some extra cash. Coco realized and felt relieved that nothing was done to her. The female servant kept pushing her to go downstairs where Mr. Byming was waiting for her. She quickly got dressed and when Cho Yang got the money, but with only a minor share in the company, the main shareholder was Zhang Company's owner, Jia Ling Zhang, and it was near to a cemetery. The price of the land was in the end left with no gains, and Cho Yang regretted his decision. He never thought that Mr. Baming will spend so much money just to assist her in getting back at him for cheating. He requested for Coco's help, but she refused and begged. Suddenly, he was knocked over by his new girlfriend, whom had seen that if Coco had a chance with Mr. Baming, she will too and even offered herself to him. Mr. Byming even rejected her and kicked them out. Coco wanted to leave as well she had schoolwork to do, but Mr. Byming wanted her to stay and serve him as now it was her turn to complete the deal with him. Filled with embarrassment, Coco wanted to leave and break the deal to which she didn't think too much and offered him that she will pay him back. On hearing this, Mr. Byming laughed and asked that if she is sure about it because two billion isn't a joke when it comes to money returning. Mr. Byming wasn't ready to let her go and forced her into the room. As soon as he was about to do something, he was interrupted by his secretary and mentioned about a master coming to dongling advance. Mr. Byming quickly got up, buttoned his shirt, and left. Coco grabbed the opportunity and quickly left his house. As soon as she entered the lawn, she saw a bunch of men trying to take advantage of the shoes group secretary. Coco thought of everyone in the Baming group and Mr. Baming as a demon for taking her revenge in a way like that. At nighttime, Mr. Baming was enjoying his evening tea and asked about what had left. Mr. Baming quickly ordered some people to get every little detail about Coco. He was completely offended by the fact that she had left his house, even though she was given a warning. The next morning, Coco woke up after having a nightmare. Suddenly, her friend came in the room and told her that they were going to be late for a decoration day and that they were supposed to be a temporary member of the etiquette team. She quickly gets up and leaves for the event. Fortunately, they got there on time. Her supervisor scolded her for coming to the event in casual clothing and that no one will be ready to give funds to their script she had written. Coco and her friend were asked to be hosts at the conference and that they had to serve drinks. Suddenly, Coco dropped the wine bottle and got completely stiff and scared, seeing that the chief guest was no other than Mr. Byming himself. 
Coco kept standing all frozen between so many people just by looking her worst nightmare right in front of her. Her friend quickly held her hand and took her to the side room, where she got extremely scolded, but all she could do was think about running away from the event. But then she realized that she needs fund for her society and that she mustn't become selfish and simply ignore Mr. Byming during the whole event. She gets very confused and decides to, so she took a walk in the lawn, where someone suddenly grabbed her from the back and surprisingly, it was Mr. Byming. Coco kept crying and requested for him to let her go. Mr. Byming made an offer that if she agrees on doing the film of her script, he will let her go earlier than the amount of days he will need her to stay at the Byming house. Mr. Byming repeatedly asked Coco to complete her promise just in the way he did. Coco began to request, and again, and this time, she started to cry out. Mr. Byming asked her to calm down and think about him giving her a sponsorship to which she dried up her tears and focused. She agreed to his help. Mr. Byming began to flirt with Coco continuously and pushed him away, saying that he was a nasty and pathetic man she had ever met. She hurried back to the dormitory and her friend came to her, telling her the good news that the president had found someone who was ready to donate in their movie. Both of them walked up to the president's office. Again, Coco panicked after seeing Mr. Byming in his office. It had turned out that Mr. Byming was reviewing the details. He was surprised that Coco had written such a good movie and wanted to discuss further. The president understood that Mr. Byming was interested in Coco. He took her friend and he left both of them talking in the office for more than an hour and during that meeting. Mr. Byming not only teased her, but also tried to approach her in every way possible. He even mentioned the script needed a few changes in which Coco was unable to concentrate and lost her guard every time when she thought he was getting serious about the meeting. Coco's friend thought she was in trouble, so she kept standing at the door, but Mr. Byming's secretary wouldn't let her in. Mr. Baming kept on teasing Coco to the point she screamed and yelled at him to leave her alone. Her friend got worried and barged in without caring about the secretary. She saw that both were sitting in silence. Her friend inquired her whether she was okay, and the president asked about whether Coco had explained the script to Mr. Byming. He didn't like the script to which the president got worried, but Mr. Byming was still ready to make a contract if Coco was ready to edit in some scenes. The president got happy and made Coco escort him out of the association. Coco wanted to thank Mr. Byming, but ended up getting tricked by him. While they were walking, Coco was handed over a picture of her sister, engaged with other men in unpleasing activities. Mr. Byming again ordered her to serve him otherwise. He will leak out her youngest sister's pictures over the internet. This was a big shock to Coco, to which she had no other option to give in. She begged him and called her stepsister a naive child for doing such things, but it didn't bother him. With no other option, she had to engage in an intimate relationship with Mr. Baming. Coco had reached the Empire House all nervous and scared. The female servants had escorted her to Mr. Baming's room, where she waited for him to come out of the shower. Mr. Baming was surprised that she finally showed up and started to tease her about her sister's pictures, taunting her with bets that if her pictures gets viewers less than a million, he can share a 10% to her account. Coco was very frustrated and started to convince him that she was wrong to involve him in her personal matter with her ex, and explained that she was sorry he had to lose a lot of money. But he kept on teasing her. Coco held his hand and promised to be obedient. She quickly picked a glass of red wine and drank it in one go. She kept defending her sister for being naive and childish, to which Mr. Byming got annoyed and threw her on the bed and took the intimate step forward. He went too far that night, even the female servants were surprised at the girl's condition and to the stains on the bed. She was covered with bruises and felt totally fragile. One of the female servant kept on taunting her, kept bothering her about having the guts to keep Mr. Baming waiting for her at breakfast, and called her a wasted woman to which Coco felt more disappointed and numb. She quickly took a shower, during which she kept on crying. As soon as Coco was about to head downstairs after taking a shower, she spotted on the laptop of those. Coco felt frustrated and went down to see Mr. Byming, where he was busy reading a newspaper, but as soon as he saw Coco, his eyes went into a deep gaze. He never imagined Coco to be so satisfying and beautiful that night. He noticed she was too embarrassed to eat, so he started to tease her about how he will have to feed him forcefully in bed to which Coco got shocked and began to eat with hesitation, saying she will eat and won't be picky. 
As soon as she was done, she thought that Mr. Byming might help her in helping with her sister's matter, to which Mr. Byming refused and demanded her to stay be his woman for a longer time just to keep things quiet. Coco was furious and thought the man has been making a fool out of her, to which she was almost near to slapping him, but Mr. Byming grabbed her hand and warned her for her actions. Soon Mr. Byming's secretary entered and gave him the agreement in which it was stated that if Coco were to spend more days with him, which was a deal made by Coco's family, he can even stop the photos from spreading across the internet and making it less bad as it was. Coco knew that the way he tortured her last night at that rate, she might not be able to survive longer and lose her dignity entirely. She begged him that she could pay him off, but Mr. Byming was amused, saying that it will be impossible for her to pay back two billion one, and that she should stop being selfish and think about her family more. She had no other choice but to accept his offer. In a disastrous situation, she wasn't expecting that her own family would sell her off, and that Mr. Byming had nothing to do with it but to accept the deal since he knew they couldn't pay it off. Coco was distressed and trembling to sign the agreement that Mr. Byming had to offer. He kept making her realize that she had nothing left but to ask him for help, and the conditions he had set were to be abided at all costs. Coco was silent and completely numb. It was as if she couldn't even think anymore because of the fear of the terrible nights she will have to suffer with him. Mr. Byming also warned her that if she is unable to pay up two billion won, he will naturally go after his family for it because it was insulting for him as a businessman to lose so much money. When Coco wasn't responding for quite a while, he ordered his secretary to let her family know that he won't help them out in covering up the mess made by Coco's sister. As he was about to leave, Coco tried to stop him and desperately uttered to make herself completely to his disposal. But Mr. Baming grabbed her and made her struggle while she cried her tears out. She kept repeating that she was ready to turn herself in and that she was ready to sign the papers immediately. As she started to sign and held the pen trembling, Mr. Byming made the call to stop the photos from getting leaked out. Coco now was believed to be an obedient toy, and the both of them started to live together and went on vacations. On a cruise ship, both were lounging in the sun, trying to catch a few fishes. Coco was anxious and wondering what could be his next move, but after a while she had an amusing thought that Mr. Byming wasn't good at fishing, since it had been an hour that he didn't caught a single one. Soon later, Mr. Byming made Coco to catch a fish. The number of fishes she will catch, the lesser the days she will have to spend with him. To which she got excited and caught plenty of fishes, but she got completely distracted when she fell on Mr. Byming's lap. As usual, he started to tease her about the price of the fishing rod and told her to be careful with it. Also, he kept telling her to stay still, otherwise things could get messier. Coco was quite uncomfortable, but quickly was relieved when she noticed Mr. Baming fell fast asleep. She then continued with her fishing at ease. Mr. Baming, when woke up from his nap, realized he had been resting his head on Coco's leg, which made it numb. Coco began to rub her leg, and Mr. Byming curiously asked that why didn't she woke him up if she was so uncomfortable, to which she replied that she didn't want him to be disturbed. Listening to that made him very happy, and he started to take more interest in her. She then highlighted the fact that she had been fishing for quite a long time, and that she had caught seven fishes in total. Mr. Baming was even more impressed and asked her to keep a note of the number, as he had promised that each one will cost... 10 million. The secretary was confused to why Mr. Byming would buy those local fishes at a very high price. But then he slowly realized that the young master was starting to take interest in her. Mr. Byming told Coco to rest up until they reach back home, to which she did, and woke up in Mr. Byming's lounge. As Coco woke up, she noticed a butler in her waiting. He then escorted her to the dining hall where a heavy feast was prepared. All of the servants were gathered around her serving her and pouring food in her plate delicately. Soon, Mr. Baming had also arrived with his secretary and settled down to eat with her. The waiter was a little nervous when Coco served him the fish she had caught because Mr. Baming doesn't like eating from utensils used by others. But it was a complete surprise to every servant when he enjoyed the meal fed by her and even complimented on the deliciousness of the food. Suddenly, Mr. Baming was called by a guest, and he immediately got up and rushed outside, 
but he turned back and told Coco to stay here until he returns, or else he would be displeased. Coco agreed and waited for him till midnight. She was skimming through the magazine pages, all written about Mr. Baming and the Yi Company, and suddenly dozed of in bed. Mr. Baming had returned quite late and saw Coco sleeping soundly and comfortably. When Mr. Baming had returned, he saw Coco lying comfortably in bed, and her clothes were a little revealing to which he couldn't control himself and leaned forward for a kiss. Coco got surprised and woke up. She was shocked but also annoyed by the fact that Mr. Byming was attracted to her body and sent again. Soon later, he realized that Coco was making him very impulsive, and her beauty was too much for him to handle. He thought to make proper clothes for her in order to hide the traces on her neck otherwise. With a character like her, she is too naive to wear anything suitable for June or July, and it will cause trouble not only to himself, but for her as well. The next morning, Coco woke up at 6.31 startled when she saw Mr. Baming lying really close next to her. He was already wide awake and admiring Coco while she was asleep and asked her if she wanted to leave for school, otherwise she could stay at home and wait for him to come back. But Coco got up and insisted to leave. She covered herself with the blanket she was in, but realized that Mr. Byming was also next to her. As soon as she realized, she yelled in embarrassment and went to the bathroom. Later, both got ready. Coco looked absolutely gorgeous that Mr. Byming couldn't take his eyes off. He quickly changed the subject and asked Coco to eat quickly, otherwise she could get late. Soon, both were done with breakfast. Mr. Byming insisted to drop her off at school, but his secretary got a fancy car for them to ride, to which Coco wasn't pleased, so Mr. Byming had to call for a casual-looking car for her so that no one at school could grab any sort of attention that may expose their relationship. His secretary was again shocked by his master's change of behavior. It was the first time that he had accompanied a woman during a ride to an important place. Coco's school was supposed to start at 8 a.m., but Mr. Byming always left for his office quite late, so he decided to change the company's working time. Now everyone had to come early at 8 a.m. and would get of early one hour before afternoon. At school, Coco had entered the Literature Association room, all dolled up to which her friend was delighted to see her and directed her as a fairy. The president of the society quickly interrupted and asked Coco to review the script and take the agreement to share it with Mr. Byming. On listening to this, she got hesitated and worried, but the president kept on forcing her and explained that he had noticed that Mr. Byming values her the most. Coco, in a great rush, had taken the script, but had forgotten about the agreement that she needed to get Mr. Byming's sign. Coco had reached the company of Mr. Byming, but wasn't allowed to meet him in person. The girls at the reception weren't allowing her to enter because she didn't have an appointment, and that she couldn't be someone important to meet up with Mr. Byming. The girls started to speak irrationally, and talked about her character that she looked very young and approachable, so she must be using her youth to attract Mr. Byming and want to be his girlfriend. Coco was very offended and got angry when suddenly the secretary came down and took Coco with him. He warned the receptionist to not misbehave with her and that she didn't need an appointment to meet Mr. Byming. Both of them finally reached the 28th floor, and Coco was quite fascinating by the looks of the office. It was quiet, spacious, and comforting. She began to admire the view from the window. While she was completely distracted, Mr. Baming asked Coco to give him the script for him to view. Coco had re-edited it and made quite a lot of changes to which Mr. Baming had no issues. She took a sigh and was relieved that the main focus was done. He then asked that how she was planning to make the script into an eye-catching movie. Coco began to share her ideas and that her society had already contacted the movie industry and that they had made a B-list which included less famous actors so that the budget won't be that costly. Coco had a panicked expression when looking through the files, she realized that the budget agreement was not in the file. Mr. Byming got the chance to tease her again and pulled her by the wrist and forced her to sit in his lap. He demanded Coco to write the budget agreement on her own while sitting in his lap. He opened the laptop for her and told her that he won't like a low-budget movie and that he was ready to spend 300 million yuan. With that said, he gently bit Coco's ear and she made a noise. Mr. Baming warned her not to make such noises because he might lose his control. 
Pushing him away, she continued with her work. She also thought about a top actor they could hire him for 300 million yuan. She then asked about the dividends the club could earn, to which he replied that if she made a profit, then he will send 10% to her account, but if she failed, she will receive nothing. Coco agreed and the document was prepared. Mr. Byming asked her to sign the document on behalf of her association, for which she did. Mr. Byming then handed over Coco an ID card for her to withdraw funds from the finance department whenever she needed them to get started on the movie. Coco requested for a leave, and as she was about, Mr. Baming pulled her and gave her a kiss to which she got embarrassed while walking down the hallway that she suddenly bumped into someone and dropped her papers. While Coco was quickly picking them up, she heard a familiar sound. She thought that Ye was around when suddenly she looked at the man in front of her. Holding was holding the script and was confused. The script slips from Coco's hands and lands on the floor. Jun picks them up and is surprised to learn that the Empire Group invested in a movie written by some unknown writer. Coco tells him it's hers and requests him to return it back to her. He asks for her name. Coco lets him know that she is Coco Ming, a member of Yifei Studio, and pleads with him to return her script because she is going downstairs. He introduces him as Jun Bei Ming, the head of the finance department of the Empire Group, and inquires if she is informed by the CEO that to withdraw funds, she would need his permission. She informs him that Mr. Bai Ming asked her to take her ID card to withdraw funds from his department. Shun is getting off work, so he offers her to join him in dinner as he wants to learn the details of the project since it costs a lot. A reluctant Coco nods and informs him that she will be waiting downstairs. Her being with Bei Ming captures Shun's interest. Shun then steps into Bei Ming's office to inquire about his plan to make a movie. He informs him that recently the Empire Group has cooperated with the Nangong family to build a direct suspension line between Dongling and Xiling, and he is still busy making a movie. He then informs her that he just met Coco and asked her for dinner because this is the first time the Empire Group has entered the film and television industry, so they should know the concrete details. He also compliments Coco and addresses her as a beauty, and he's curious to know what it would be like to fall in love with that little girl. Baming pauses and warns him not to touch her, and she is until he gets tired. Short acknowledges that she is his, but reminds him not to keep her for a long time because the master does not want him to have a serious relationship. It does not matter to him she is clean, and he's not tired of her yet. He tells her that he scheduled an appointment with her to be acquainted with her, and if he wouldn't mind, and also inquires about her performance. Baming closes his eyes and confesses that she could do nothing except for crying. Shun wonders why he was so direct, and it seems that he really does not care about her. He also investigates if he ended up finding the person Master tasked him with. He lets him know that he hasn't. As he's leaving, he reminds her that he's going to dine with that little beauty. Baming lights his cigarette, feeling a pang of jealousy as he questions her audacity to dine with another man, and admits that she is gutty. In the restaurant, Coco receives a text message from Baiming, who tells her to wait for him in the company and come back to Empire House tonight. When they arrive back at the office, Coco is standing still before the building, contemplating whether to hear, why is she not going upstairs? He then grabs her hand, taking her by force and asking how Baiming and her know each other. She remains silent. He asks her why she is mute. Upon entering Baming's office, much to their surprise, they discover another girl seated on his lap. Upon witnessing this scene, Coco hastily runs away, prompting Shun to inquire, What's wrong with her? Coco replies, She must leave here immediately. However, she is stopped by one of Baming's guards, who informs her that Sir wants to see her. She is then brought back into Baming's presence, and he tells her that she just ruined his happy moment. But now that she's here and he is in spirits, he insists that she must replace the other girl to fulfill his desires. She tells him she does not want to be like that. Shun is amazed that there is really someone who is capable of refusing Baming's love and that he is not popular with every girl. The other girl inquires about Beaming and Coco's relationship, he replies back. Just like her, he wants to accompany her tonight, and she can go back to school first. While Shun wonders that he never allowed such women to enter his office and he broke his rules again, what on earth is he thinking about? 
Baming hands over his business card to the girl and tells him that she doesn't want to do that and she wouldn't be humiliated by him like that. She ponders that it's better to die than lose her dignity. In her desperate attempt to escape, she makes a run for it but tragically stumbles and collides headfirst with a table. She loses consciousness and blood begins to flow from her injured head as she continues to plead with Baming not to let others watch. Seeing her in this condition, Baiming panics and screams at Jun to drive his car out and what he is waiting for. In the hospital, Jun wonders that he did not expect this girl to be so unyielding, and he was just kidding and she actually took it seriously and fortunately it was just a mild concussion. He also requests Baiming to let her go, and if he just likes her body, he will arrange her some clean and beautiful ones. Beaming inquires if he would not fall for this little white rabbit. He states that it is not possible and he just merely pities her. Baming warns him that he better not touch her or he is never soft-hearted with those who betray him. He assures her that there is no need for him to touch his girl, but after all, she is just an ignorant little girl and he does not have to be that cruel. After that, he leaves. Beaming wonders that Coco fought against him in such a way, and that how is she now? Coco is having a nightmare where she is constantly repeating that she does not want to die and is shouting for help. She grabs Baming's hand and holds it tightly. Baming notices that she is scared. She again begs in her sleep to not let others watch. Baming checks her temperature and notices that it has reduced. Then he turns around, but she doesn't let go of his hand. Baming wants to go and sit on a comfortable and big sofa, but instead chooses to stand by her side and keep holding her hand after an hour she regains her consciousness, finding him in the same position. She suddenly starts apologizing and promising not to do it again and being an obedient girl. She thinks to herself that she should not have been so impulsive. What if he gets angry and decides to take it out on her family? And she can deal with everything else as long as he does not make her live without her dignity. Biming Hand is numb, who now demands that she gets up and eat breakfast. Poco realizes that she has missed school and asks for permission to just call her classmate one. She hurls a lot of questions in her direction, demanding to know where she has been and why she did not come to class today and her cell phone is off, inquiring that she asked the counselor for leave and what happened to her. Is everything all right? She assures her that she is fine and she just hit her forehead at the mall yesterday. Her friend is concerned about her and asks if she is injured and if it's serious, and if she has seen a doctor and wants to come to meet her. She lies to her that she is at a friend's house and she hasn't informed her family about it because she does not want them to worry, so she must keep it a secret. She inquired which friend of hers. She tells him that it's Shun who she met yesterday and he happened to see her and helped her while avoiding eye contact with Biming. Her friend advises her to seize the opportunity as he is a handsome guy she has seen the pictures on the internet. She warns her not to spout nonsense and they don't have a relationship like that and she will come tomorrow, then they can talk about it. Just as she hangs up, Baming throws her to the bed and master of their empire group. He tries to explain that she did not. He says she is trying to seduce him when Shun is also taking interest in her. She tells him to ignore Xiao nonsense and that she only talked about business during the meal. She also informs him that he won't like her because he knows that she is his. Baiming is mad because Shun never talks about business during the meals. She realizes that she cannot push him off his limits anymore and starts taking off her clothes. Baiming asks her what she is doing, and he never said that he does not trust her. He inquires if she's making amends for what happened yesterday, or is she just worried that he will hurt her family? He leans ahead. He also warns her to never do that again, as she is aware of the consequences. She ensures she won't. She then asks him that yesterday count that she accompanied him. He thinks to himself, how resistant is this woman to stay with me? He reveals that he did not sleep last night and kept standing, so if she does not want to rest, she should do something else with him to save his time. Intimidated, she shuts her eyes off and says she is dizzy and she wants to sleep. She wonders that he kept standing at it. She wonders that he kept standing and did not sleep, so she should have shared her bed with him. She wonders if he really stood by the bed all night but then thinks it's impossible. In the school, people talk about how Fei Fei took Mr. Bai Ming's business card to participate in the movie. They wonder if she can make it. After all, she is the principal's daughter and the school's babe. 
They then talk about how the boys and their association are like bees who saw sugar and vying with each other to introduce the plot to her. They also witnessed her hugging the president that day. They all then become quiet when they see she's coming their way. She has come to meet Coco and asks if she's going to the Empire House tonight and if she can accompany her. Coco refuses and tells her that she has to go to the school and does not have much time, and if she wants, she can go by herself. Fafi thinks to herself that she should stop putting on airs. If it had not been for Sir, she wouldn't have even talked to her, and a girl like her will soon bore Sir, so it's really ridiculous for her to have a good opinion of herself. Later, we see that Xiang Xiang has accompanied Coco to the hospital, and she expresses her gratitude. Xiang Xiang is curious to know what has happened at the meeting. Why was the president directed against her? The president demanded that Coco pleases Ye Bei Ming so as to let Tang Fei Fei be the top actress. This makes Xiang Xiang mad, who warns her against Fei Fei because she had a bad experience with her in the past, and she is aware how vicious she is. But Coco is too distracted because Beaming told her when he had dropped her earlier than later the driver would come to pick her up. She texted him that the driver does not have to come, and wonders if he has seen the text. When the car arrives, she lies to Xiang Xiang that she has a meeting with Shun to discuss finance. Unexpectedly, Bei Ming is also in it, in the car. She explains that her friend insisted on accompanying her to the hospital, so she was afraid that she would know the affair between us. I didn't trust her, he says. What affair? She wonders if he's mad at her. She tells him that she came here because she did not want her to know that she would go to the Empire House. He asks her if she's really that scared of him. She admits that she is awfully scared. He smirks. She thinks to herself that this man seemed to have no heart. Even his smile is full of indifference and alienation. He pulls her into his arms. She explains that she does not mean to offend him, but they agreed that they wouldn't disclose their relationship. Baming questions that were, did he agree with her? He leans his face closer to her and raises a question if she's really afraid of him or she's just unwilling to stay by his side. Frightened by him, she changes the topic and asks how did he know that she was in the hospital, and how long has he been there? He says not long, just over an hour. She wonders if he followed her all the way from the school, but didn't stop her directly at the school gate. She uses her books in the dorm as an excuse to be able to stay in the dorm, but he remains silent. Unwilling to give up, she tells him that there will be an examination next week and she wants to go for a review. She wonders if he has fallen asleep and that she just thought too much. How could he care about her feelings? After an awkward moment of silence, he orders the driver to go back to school. She thanks him, but he warns her that she has only 15 minutes to get the books from her dorm, and when the time is up, he will go to the dormitory to find her himself. She is dumbfounded and ask him that. Does he want her to get the books and return to the Imperial House with him? He says there are 14 minutes and 50 seconds left. She slams the door on his face. The driver is shocked that she vented her anger and that he thought she would have never dared to lose her temper in front of Sir. Unexpectedly, Baming invited Fei Fei to join them at the Empire House tonight. Fei Fei kisses Baming and asks him if she can call his name. Baming seems uninterested in and only stares at Coco. Two people are conversing about Baming, their identities unknown. One of them claims that Baming is still insincere in women, as usual. But the other person believes that a woman that can be brought to the Empire House by him is somehow different. The gray-haired man disagrees that the woman is obviously the type he always prefers. What's the difference? But he says the one sitting in front is different. In the Empire, Fei Fei has already occupied Coco's seat at the Dai Fei Baming, who allowed her to sit there. She needs to stand beside him. He's mad that Coco does not care about her seat at all, and if that's the case, she should stand as she likes. Coco then serves, Baming the soup. Fei Fei also tries to offer him the food, but Baming is irritated and calls his servant, who asks Fei Fei to sit on the next seat. But Fair is humiliated and thinks that how dare a servant talk to her like that. When she becomes the hostess of the Beaming family, she will surely deal with him. Coco giggles as she sees that Fei Fei is refusing to obey Beaming's order, and this must have been unexpected to Beaming as well. Beaming glances at her and notices that she is laughing. He pulls her into his lap and orders him to keep distributing food, while his servant forces Fei Fei to sit on the other seat. She feeds him, 
This makes Fei Fei real mad that he is so indifferent to her. Change it, or else he will dislike her more. In the room. Coco tries to stop him, telling him it's not cool, but he believes that it's cool. Beaming reminds Coco that she has been with him all these days and she hasn't learned to be obedient. Coco panics and tells him that he should not do that. They just had a meal. Besides, she has not taken a bath and she is dirty now. He asks her if she's reminding him to take a bath now. Well then, let's have a bath together. He picks her up. In the bathroom, she tells him that Dr. Yang told her to keep her wounds from water. He states then she should be obedient and not move. He will help her. After the bath. They are sitting in the room when Coco thinks that he's a liar and he said he would let her review lessons today and her waist hurts now. He rubs his hand on her waist. Conquest surprised and realizes that his hand is so warm that she feels better now Coco turns her eyes to look at him and he tells her if she's trying to seduce him with eyes again. Coco suddenly divides her attention back to her book and starts reading and thinks that as the president of the Empire Group, how can he be indelicate like this? While Beaming ponders over the thought that high self-control always fails to work on this woman. That's when Fei Fei knocks the door and asks the boy did he go, and she knocked the door so many times and no one responded. Fei Fei is mad to see Coco and Beaming together and wonders how many dirty tricks this woman has played in secret. Coco stands up and offers her seat to Fei Fei as she is going to read a book. Beaming does not seem very pleased with it and thinks how this woman tried to push him to another woman again and again. She really looks down upon him. Beaming orders Fei Fei to go wait in the bar counter downstairs and he's busy now. He will be coming to her a moment later. She agrees and reminds him that she will be waiting, so he should not be late. Coco wonders if he's angry again, but why, as it has nothing to do with her. It's good for him to stay with Fei Fei tonight since he won't come back to torture her. After a while, he goes down and sees Fei Fei, who has changed her clothing into a very pretty dress. But unexpectedly, he has also brought Coco along, who is not pleased with him bringing her down to drink when he promised to let her study. Fifi approaches him. She subtly hints at wanting a compliment when she asks him if she is looking pretty in this dress. He turns around to Coco and tells her to wear such a dress next time, completely ignoring Fei Fei. He then orders her to pour some wine for him. As she's pouring the drink, she calls him a devil and that she's never going to wear a dress for him. He pulls her into his arms and tells her that this wine reminds him of what she looks like after drinking. She seems reluctant to come closer to him, but he dares her to escape and then she will know the price that she has to pay. He then asks her to drink the wine. She consumes it all in one go as she gets frightened by her threat. A drunk Coco is now sitting in Baming's lap, who reminds him that he agreed to allow her to go back after she drank this glass of wine. But Baming says he will accompany her. It tries to stop him saying that she is also drunk. Why does he not accompany her? But Beaming shows her cold shoulders, telling her that she's drunk so she needs to rest. He gives her a dress to put it on, but she refuses to wear it because it's too revealing. He tries to bribe her by saying that her days will be reduced if she wears it. Coco does not wish to wear the dress even because she has never wore such dress before, but Beaming tries to force it upon her that he will put it on her right there. Coco gets shocked and she says she'll put it on her own. She then changes into that dress and reminds Baming that her 10 days should be reduced now. He pushes her into the bed. She informs him that earlier he said he is tired, but he says she got it all wrong. After they spend the night together, Coco wakes up and finds Baming smoking next to her and wonders to herself that she heard smoking is not addictive and the only thing addictive is the lonely heart. She thinks if someone like him could be lonely. She gets up and moans because of tiredness. He asks if it's an invitation. Furiously, she shouts no and thinks to herself it's obviously the sequela of his torture last night. As he proceeds to touch her, she dodges his touch and falls out of the bed. In a flirtatious manner, he inquires if she needs his help, but she is adamant on not taking it. In the washroom, she tells him she will be ready soon, but he whispers in her ear in no hurry and lifts her shirt up. She tries to resist and moans, but he tells her to not shout and he will satisfy her abnormal preferences right away and lifts her up. Later in the school, her friend approaches her and informs Li Nangong will come to Dongling in advance to participate in a charity party in the upper class and asks her to go and meet him. She inquires if the news is accurate and where did she get it. 
She asks her to trust her and it must be accurate. And she heard that Lenangong was born in a rich and noble family, and filming is merely his hobby. And she inquires if she is not aware that Nangong family is one of the biggest families in Xiling. Coco is worried that he won't be willing to work with them. Besides, how do ordinary people like them attend the banquet in the upper class? But her genius friend already sorted out everything. She has borrowed the invitation letters and the dresses. All that is left is to go and get changed. Coco wonders if Biming will attend tonight as he hasn't contacted her for the past two days. On the other hand, Biming Driver inquires if he has any doubt about what Ching Fu Zhao had said, that the car accident was only an accident, but he wonders why did the child disappear mysteriously. Biming orders Ching Fu to be followed without slack. His driver then inquires if he's planning to go to the banquet, but he doesn't give an answer. Coco arrives at the vanguard. Her friend compliments her that she is indeed the most beautiful girl in the Beitang University of Science and Engineering and calls herself Coco's fan. Coco tells her not to be naughty, but she says she's telling the truth. She then leaves to take a bite of cake to cheer herself up. And Coco wonders, where on the earth did she get the dresses and the invitation letters? She invites Coco to join her and eat something with her, but Coco decides to not bother her as everyone has a secret, so she would wait for her to take the initiative to tell her. When she is busy laughing and chatting with her friend Xiang Xiang, a blonde-haired man approaches her and says that he has not seen her at this kind of banquet before and if she just arrived at the dongling. Goku tries to excuse herself as she explains she rarely attended a banquet like this and she just came to have fun today. He replies that he also is here for fun instead of business and offers her to keep him company. Xiang Shang blocks him and says that his way of adjusting is a bit old-fashioned, keeping in mind that Coco dislikes playboys with good looks. He then introduces himself as Chen Dong Fang, the general manager of Dong Fang Group. They both are stunned to learn that he's from the Dong Fang Group, the company that is only second to the Empire Group in Dong Ling. Xiang Xiang then explains that they are the students of Yifei Studio, and they hope that they can have the opportunity to cooperate with their company in the future. Their attention is then diverted by the girl chittering, only to find out that Li Nang Gong is making an entry, Xiang Xiang states. That Li Nang Gong is rumored to be grumpy and always keeps a certain distance from others, so they wonder how they should get close to him. Coco thinks to herself that Li Nangong and Ye Beiming are similar to each other. It's just that one is quiet and reserved while the other is bossy and domineering. Chen Dongfang notices that they are looking for Li Nangong and offers to help. Coco is aware that as the general manager of Dongfang Group, Chen Dongfang has a say here and they can have a try. She does admit that she wants his help and they do want to talk to Mr. Nangong. He leans in closer and whispers not to regard him as an outsider, and generally girls call him Chen or Brother Dong Fang. Coco clenches her fist and calls him Brother Dong Fang while requesting him to help them. He agrees to help now that she calls him Brother, and asks her to follow him if she wants to meet him, he'll take her there. He then introduces them to Li Nangong. Coco takes a seat, but she regrets coming here with Chen Dong Fang, as they were rejected. And maybe the reason is he has always been harassed by girls. Now he looks more indifferent after he sees them. She extends her hand for a handshake and introduces herself as Coco Ming and informs him that they are here to talk about cooperation. But he ignores her. She offers him to play the leading role in the film. He confronts them about the sponsorship by the Empire Group and thinks they are joking. But Coco explains that there is no need for them to lie, and he will know the facticity as long as he inquires about it. Nangong wonders to himself, what is Ye Beiming doing? She informs him that she did not bring the script here today, and if he can make an appointment to discuss the script in details, but Nangong's assistant offers his card and states that he is really busy these days. But if she still insists on inviting him, so she can give the script to him, and he will discuss with his boss later. An embarrassed Coco decides to leave, but Chen pins her back down and says it's a private time now. And since they all are friends, why don't they sit and have a drink? At that moment, Biming also made an entry accompanying Fei Fan Yu, known as the international superstar Fei Fan. Chen and they're leaving. Anne takes a confused Xiang Xiang along with her, 
Who questions why is she in such a hurry all of a sudden? Baming eyes are laser-focused on her. Who follows her and blocks her way and inquires why is she here? Coco explains that she heard Mr. Nan Gong would come to the banquet tonight, so she wanted to discuss something with him. She thinks to herself if he's aware of what she wanted to discuss, he then turns around stating that it turns out that she's a fan of Lai and offers her to join them, and touches her hand in a flirtatious way. Back at the gathering, Baiming mentions that the second young master of the Mu family in Dongling would not attend such a banquet. Zijin replies that if Baiming can be here, why can't he? And adds that Master Baiming has always been busy. It's a heart-won opportunity meeting him here. On the other hand, Chen offers Coco a cup of tea, but she refuses. Chen inquires if the movie is funded by the Empire Group. In that case, she would be familiar with Baiming. Before replying, she makes an eye contact with Baiming and becomes hesitant to reply. Fia Fan asks Baiming that if he's aware of the Empire Group investing in a movie project. She then inquires from Lei if they offered him to play the leading role. Lei admits they did offer him to play the leading role. Coco wonders to herself what does that mean if he is acquainted with Lei Gong Gong, but he actually told them to invite him. Chen informs Baiming that his two girls invited Lei to star in the movie and they were almost kicked out by him, and asks if he is not going to do anything about it. Baiming replies, if he invites Lei. Lei will soon surely accept his invitation, but he won't be happy in the bottom of his heart. He just doesn't want to force him. Lei inquires if that means he can reject them. He states, of course, as he takes a sip from his drink, Coco is furious at him and calls him an evildoer in her mind. Lei then informs his manager that he has been tired recently, and he also wants to take a vacation, his manager replies. In that case, the appointment with Miss Coco is cancelled. Coco this time is unbothered and wishes him a nice holiday. Xiang Xiang comes closer to Coco and whispers in her ear that it is stressful to be with them and suggests leaving. Coco agrees with Xiang Xiang and they leave. Coco thinks to herself that the task was ruined by Baming himself, which has nothing to do with them but considers sending him a message that they are leaving. She hears a voice behind which says, Why is she leaving in such a hurry and if she is not going to wait for Baming? Surprised, they look behind only to find out the second son, Zijin of the Mu family. When he comes closer, he notices bandage on Coco's forehead and extends his hand to touch it, but she dodges it. She states, although they failed to invite Mr. Nong Gong, please convince that even if he is rich, he cannot take her for granted. Her friend Xiang Xiang comes in front of her and shields her inquiring what he want, and the banquet was not held by him, so he has no right to stop them from leaving. He states that he can persuade Lai Nong Gong to participate in their movie. Coco thinks to herself that he might be capable of helping them, but she is afraid that it's not that simple. He offers to help her on one condition, that she will leave you baming. His demand leaves Coco flabbergasted. Xiang Xiang asks him, what does he mean by that? As there is no relationship between Coco and baming, and what is his motive to say something like that? He warns Coco that she will come to no good if she continues to be with him and asks how much she wants as everyone bears a price in her mind and he can help her get that price. She reminds him that it's none of his business, and if he really has a problem with that, he can directly go and talk to him and then leaves with Xiang Xiang. He screams from behind that he didn't give her permission to leave. He then calls and orders someone to kidnap Coco. Chen asks Bei Ming if he has slept with Coco and informs him that Zijin has taken the beauties to have fun with them. Fifan asks Chen why does he have to make fun of Bei Ming and if he really likes the girl in green dress, he can go and get her back. She passes a drink to Bei Ming and he drinks it in one gulp. He bangs it onto the table as Chen asks him if that woman is really Bai Eming's woman and if she is not, then he can take her. But Baming gets furious and responds that she is his woman and asks Zijin to not touch her before he is tired of her. Meaning he can take her after Baming gets tired of Coco on his way, Baming sees that Coco texted him before leaving. He notices Xiang Xiang far on the streets. She's asking people about Coco. He opens his door and he runs and asks Xiang Xiang about Coco and where is she? Xiang Xiang anxiously responds that she went to the bathroom and Coco was waiting for her outside but when she came back, Coco was nowhere to be seen. Baming asks her if she meet or talk to anyone before she left. She tells Baming that they met Zijin before leaving and he asked Coco to leave Baming. Baming then leaves as he knows where to go. Xiang Xiang knows it's not normal because Coco is never a person who will leave without saying anything.
She also wonders that Baiming seems very worried for Coco and does not understand what Zhu Jin meant earlier. Mr. Baining back in his car calls Coco, but her phone is powered off. He orders the drive to go to Zijin Villa by the sea. Somewhere else, Coco gets back her consciousness and wonders where she is. She hears someone asks Zijin if he is really going to do it. And so he can get the camera, Coco hears Zijin saying, Start, she gets scared. When he says to start tearing off her clothes in front of the camera, she suddenly hits one of the guy asking them to not touch her. One of them says she woke up, and we see four shirtless men surrounding her on the bed. She has no idea what's going on, and we Zijin sitting across on a sofa saying it's going to be more fun now that she's awake. Coco pretends to be calm and understands what's going on. Zijin knocked her out and brought her here so he can shoot her videos. So Baiming will think Coco betrayed her. But Coco tells Zijin that even if he gives Baiming these videos, there's no way Baiming will think she betrayed him. Even if she does not betray him, as long as her body is touched by other men, Baiming wouldn't want her anymore. Coco knows that Zijin will never accept that she was forced to be with Baiming, and he'll play hard to achieve his aim. He then asks the men to not wait any longer and do what they're supposed to do. She takes one of the decoration piece that was beside the bed and holds it for self-defense as all the men reaches over to her. She hits one of the guy with the decoration piece. He gets hit to hard that he bleeds while Coco escapes. He tells Zijin that he'll go find her now. As she's running, she finds out that they're in a boat. She tells Zijin that if he takes even one step more, she'll jump off. He responds he knows she does not wish to die so she can stop with her act and come here. Coco asks him why must he force her to death. He taunts her that she's together with Baming for money and there's no need for her to keep on acting virtuous. Coco tells him if he helps her leave Baming, she'll not ask for a single penny. Zijin tells her to not play tricks on him as he steps towards her. She knows if she were to be ruined by him, it would be better to just die. Zijin tries to reach out for her, but it is too late as Coco jumps off. Zijin orders his men to go and save her, knowing that she cannot swim. Baming's boat comes, and he asks Zijin about Coco, but Zijin tells him she jumped off. Baming, right at the moment, jumps off to find her. Zijin wonders about how important Coco is to him that his expression changed in an instant as he jumped off. Coco sees him, and Baming grabs and kisses her, telling her he won't let her die. He then takes her out, and she coughs and faints. He tells her to wake up, and he won't allow her to die. He notices that she's not breathing and gets in shock. He shouts to drive the cruise ship back and to call for an ambulance. Zijin now understands that Coco is different from all the women in the past, and he knows that if something ends up happening to her, Baming will not let him be. Baming holds Coco in his arm and tells her to rest ashore as he'll definitely save her. He goes on to say that if he unable to bring her back to life, he'll let everyone die together with her right here. Coco suddenly chokes on water and wakes up. Mr. Baiming is surprised and hugs her tightly. Zijin is glad that she came to life. Coco never thought that one day she'll be grateful for Baiming's appearance. In the hospital, the doctor tells her that she can be discharged at any time, as all the procedures have been completed for her in advance. Coco thanks the doctors. She goes back to her house, and her sister asks her if Coco brought a new phone for her, as her old phone is broken. Coco tells her she had no time for it as she was busy studying and there's no extra money for the time being. In her room, her sister is taunting her that she never wished to buy a phone for her, and she's merely an illegitimate child of a father who was adopted by our family, and that they've been so kind to her, but she is not grateful at all. She noticed Coco had her old phone and rushes to her and pushes her while shouting that, how dare Coco steal her phone and she's just like her mother, Coco falls down but shouts back to her to get out of her room as she does not wish to talk to her right now. Her angry sister asks her how dare she do this to her. She blames Coco for taking her father's love away, and now she even stole her phone and tried to see her secrets. Coco is lying on her bed as she knows that she shouldn't have pampered Shan Shan before. She wouldn't be like that. Coco's sister, with her friends, talks about how the dress is so pretty, which Coco says that it belongs to Xiang Xiang, and she has to give it back to her. Her sister does not believe these things to be of that pauper and tells Coco that they're all hers now. Coco asks good. He kisses her and holds her hand. Coco thinks to herself that had it not been for his rapid heartbeat, she would have almost thought what had just happened had nothing to do with him. 
Baming lights a cigarette, Coco requests him not to smoke because she doesn't want her family to learn about this, and they will smell smoke when she goes back. She then wonders if her dad is worried since she has stepped out for so long, and worries about others too. She then asks for his permission to leave, but he refuses and demands she sits for a while with him. She expresses her gratitude to him for saving her yesterday, but he remains silent. She wonders if he is going to fall asleep. She then inquires the reason for his arrival here if he has any projects going on. He replies that it is related to investment and tells her to ask her father to buy as many old houses as possible. The houses will be very valuable. He is going to invest in the development of Hualan Street. Her phone rings. It's her father. She lies to him that she is at a friend's house and she will come back later. She then requests Bei Ming to drive her to the street corner. He inquires if she is afraid of being seen by others and places her hand on her face. She pleads with him to go back, but then calms herself so he doesn't get excited. Bai Ming finds it amusing to see her expressions when she is being made fun of and calls his driver to come back. She then tells him the location where she will get off. After getting off, she bids him farewell. She thinks to herself that she has been used to slavishness after all these days and wonders when she can return to her original life by completely getting rid of him. She then recalls everything that happened recently and realizes so many things have happened in such a short period of time that she feels as if a generation has passed. On her way back home, she decides to buy some fruit, but she finds it difficult to carry those heavy bags because the sequel of drowning accompanied with Bei Ming's torture. Now she's so weak that she can carry two bags of fruit. Suddenly someone else picks it up. She looks up just to find Zijing standing in front of her. She takes a step back as she is startled by him. A truck is coming her way at a high speed. Zijing quickly acts and catches her and asks what her problem is and not to hurt others if she wants to die. She pushes him and inquires. What else does he want? He asks her not to be nervous and he merely came to pay her a visit. She, with her guard up, expresses her gratitude, but she is fine. They then take a walk. She informs that if he wants her to leave, Ye Bei Ming, he better talk to him by himself. An elderly lady passes by and mistakes Zi Jing for her boyfriend and compliments his looks. She clarifies to her that he is merely delivering the food for her. She laughs it off and leaves. She diverts her attention to him and inquires, What on earth does he want? If he can make Bei Ming let her go, she will pay him. He questions how much she plans to pay. She's doubtful and inquires if he is willing to help her and why. He replies that he does not want her to be with him, and nor does he want him to be fascinated by any woman. She wonders that if he cares about Bei Ming so much, they might have something. She is surprised that he is even aware of the floor she lives in, and it seems he really investigated her. As he's leaving, he asks her to tell him if she makes up her mind and he will help her. She finds Zijing strange, and wonders if he really likes Ye Bei Ming. Her sister is waiting for her inside the house as she has seen the draft plan in her bag and inquires if her studio is cooperating with a big company and is having a talent show. Coco refuses to let her know because she is too young to take part in and it is just a small draft. She will help her if there is any good opportunity in the future. Coco believes that Shan Shan is not mature enough. If she really participates in the talent church, She's afraid she will bunk classes every day and even quit school, which will be terrible. Shan Shan calls her a liar and she tells her that she has seen it all. It costs millions to promote it. It is not a small draft at all and she just doesn't want her to live a good life. She then asks her not to come back as she is not welcomed here. Next day, as she's going to the school, she wonders that after living together for more than 10 years, doesn't Shan Shan even have a sense of sisterhood to her? Zijin passes by and stops and offers her to drive to school, but she ref he follows her to university and becomes the center of attention. As girls are stunned by his beauty and praise him for his charming appearance, Coco thinks to herself when he will stop following her. Her friend Xiang Xiang approaches her and inquires what happened to her the night before as she left alone, which almost scared her to death. Zijin intervenes and says she was with him the night before, and the phone was out of power so she didn't notify her in time. Xiang Xiang recognizes him and wonders that wasn't he the one who warned Coco to leave Bei Ming that night, so why is he together with Coco now? Straightforward with his intention, he states that he was unhappy because he thought there was an affair between them because he likes her and wants to chase her. 
An embarrassed Coco replies that he is just kidding and asks him to return the things to her and thanks him for help. But now she's going back to the dormitory. But he insists on having dinner with her as he is hungry. He then inquires if she is waiting for Ye before he could finish his sentence. She quickly agrees to accompany him. She requests Yang Xiang to help her take her things back, who teases her to go and not starve the cool dude. After the dinner, Coco is surprised that she did not expect him to enjoy such cheap noodles. He doesn't act like a master of a rich family. As they're taking a walk, Coco is reminded of being here with Beiming before, and embarrassment and fear is apparent on her face. Zijing notices her being absorbed in thought and inquires if she has come here with Beiming before. She lies to him that she did not. He suddenly grabs her hand and walks to that side. She asks him what he is doing and she won't go there. He lifts her up and mentions to scream only if she wants to be heard by others. Coco is panicking as she doesn't want to go to that place, but they pass by it and move forward. She realizes that they did not go there. He places her on a bench nearby and, and apologizes for having misunderstood her and done something bad to her. As compensation, he requests her to tell her how he forced her to be with him, and he will help her. Coco thinks to herself that when she was betrayed by her ex-boyfriend and threatened by Bai Ming, she couldn't tell anyone, and she couldn't even dare to cry. But now? Zijin says he could help her as long as she tells him everything. She doesn't tell him as she believes she cannot help her. She accepts his apology, but on the condition that he doesn't come to her again in the future. As she leaves, he softly whispers that he really began to like her, and he will come to her again. Later, Fei Fei approaches Coco and asks if she quarreled with Bei Ming these days, as he only asks to accompany her in the future house. She also states he is so fond of her, he even neglects Coco now. Coco simply turns around and tells her to never mind and take good care of him. She thinks to herself if it is necessary to show off, but she would rather want her to speak ill of her in front of Beaming to make him hate her. As Coco leaves, Fai Fai becomes furious, wondering why she can be only close to Bai Ming while she can only work with the servants every day. Later, Coco is in Shun's office and recalls Yan Xiang telling her Nian Hua Shu tried to meet Mr. Bai Ming several times, but was refused knowing that Coco could directly go to the 28th floor. He shamelessly asked her to help him. She tells him that she met with him to see if the draft plan is feasible. He asked her to call her brother Bei Ming or by his name. She calls him brother. He then inquires if she is interested in being her assistant. The annual salary is 200,000 yuan, and since it is only a part-time job, this is the most reasonable price he can afford. She's shocked to hear the price and inquires why he is offering her the position. He states because she is safe enough. If it is someone else, that person will apply for at least 5 million from him and and save 2 million for him, and he will give her 200 annual salary, which is equivalent to using her free for 10 years. He gives her one day to consider it. He then takes her to try the company's afternoon tea. That's when Beiming arrives with Fei Fan, and she inquires where he is going during office hours. He replies that he's having afternoon tea with his little sister and asks what about them. She replies they just came back as Bei Ming accompanied her to play around today, then they are leaving. Shun spots a smile on Coco's face and realizes that seeing him being with another woman, she smiles happily instead of being jealous. So it appears that the girl really does not like him. She informs Shun that she made up her mind and she will be his assistant. On her way back home, she gets a call from Bei Ming who instructs her to come to his office immediately. She asks, wasn't he with Fei Fan? He replies that he came back and she just has five minutes. If she doesn't come by, then he will come to her school to find her. Five minutes later, the door creaks open of Bei Ming's office and Coco enters. He orders her to come near and shows her the view from the window and asks her if she wants to go there. Coco is amazed by the view and wishes to go up there and take a look. He tells her he will take her there next time. He kisses her. She asks him when did all her thoughts on her face. He tells her no matter whatever she is thinking about, as long as she is obedient, there will be no ill treatment towards her. She assures him that she will be obedient. He tells her that Lai Nangong is still in the gongling, and if she wishes to meet him, then he can ask him to come to the Empire Place. He tells her he won't use his identity as his friend to affect him, but if she really cannot invite him, then this cooperation will be over. She complains deep down that Bei Ming wishes to persuade Lai Nangong, but they don't even have a chance to get close to him. 
He asks her if it's necessary to think too much about others when she's on his arms. He touches her face, and she wonders why so many girls hurry to approach a bad man like Baiming. He wonders that he has been too much obsessed with Coco these days. She asks Baiming if she can go. Suddenly, Fifan's sister comes in and Coco gets hurt since she was right behind the door. She comes in asking what's wrong with him as he left Fifan alone outside. Coco puts her hand on the wound and says it hurts. Baiming rushes over and asks her to not move. Fifan can't believe he's showing such a worry expression towards Coco and asks him, Who is she? And it's all right for him to play around women. But why does he have to do it in his office and why did he left Fifan outside alone? He tells her it's none of her business and asks if there's more left to say so she can and go out. She asks him when will he marry sister Fifan as she's already 25. As he puts medicine on Coco's wounds, he replies, when did he promise to marry Fifan? Fifan's sisters asks him how can he say that as Fifan has been with him for so long. Fifan intervenes saying that he should ignore what Dai Dai said as she also just began her career. So it's difficult for her to marry right now as well to which Baiming replies that even if she thinks about it later on, it'll not be with him. Dai Dai asks her sister that why is she afraid of Baiming. Dai Dai asks Baiming if he is afraid of Master, but he asks her to shut up otherwise he will get her out of the office. She replies that she does not mind being thrown out by him, but she cannot let Sister Fifan go through injustice. He tells Dai Dai that he does not like her, and Coco knows the atmosphere is getting serious, as Bei Ming seems really angry this time. Bei Ming asks Fifan if she wishes to be his women knowing what his women's have to do. He lifts up Coco and tells them he will show what his women's have to do while Coco is terrified and asks him not to do it. He slams the door open and throws Coco on the bed. Coco wonders it's their business, and she has nothing to do with it. So why should it be her who bears the consequences? He tears open her clothes and she curses Bei Ming. He is forcing her while she's crying and begs him to not do it to her. Fifan cries and tells him she was wrong and will not have any wild wishes, so he should not be so cruel towards Coco. He looks at Coco who's crying so much, so he backs off. He tells Fifan and Dai Dai to not sit on the floor as it's cold. She wonders that she has never seen such a yeah, and she asks him if the girl is okay. Dai Dai whispers to Feifan to not sympathize with Coco because she was brought here with money. She knew what was going to happen with her. Dai Dai asks Bei Ming that she's hungry and if he can eat with them. Dai Dai wonders that it's so miserable to be Bei Ming's woman and she should find another man for her sister Feifan instead of letting her be with a beast. Coco is on the street and depressed that when will the 200 nights end and she does not wish to stay with that bad guy for a single moment she has no idea what she should do now. Suddenly a car stops next to her and it's Zijin. He asks her why is she here and sees that she's very scared. He asks her who bullied her and gets out of his car. He holds her and questions if it's Bei Ming. She tells him she's going to school and wonders if it makes any sense if she tells him about it. She wonders that Yi Bei Ming stepped her dignity on the ground and he tortured her to death. And Zijin nearly killed her not too long ago. She wonders how can she guarantee he will not torture her like Yi Bei Ming. Goes on and he tells her she looks very unhappy and to go with him. At another location, he tells her the driver had something urgent to do, so he left and tells her that even if she's really hungry, she should wait since the food is hot. He tries the food as well, and it's very spicy for him. She does not understand why he brought her here when he cannot even handle spicy food. He asks her if she's staring at him because she finds him more good looking than Yi Bei Ming. Coco is deep down thinking that she has been so affected by Baiming that even if she knows Zijin has other purposes, she still feels grateful for the purpose, and she tells herself she's really pathetic. When Zijin comes out of the bathroom, he's not feeling well and lies down on the bed, asking her she should take a taxi back to the school, and he'll pay her a visit tomorrow at school. She wonders why is he so fond of flaunting his superiority, and it seems that he has acute gastroenteritis but still refused to go to the hospital or let her inform his family. She knows that if she leaves him home, it'll be dangerous since his health can get worse, so she decides to stay with him as he falls asleep. Coco informs her friend that she cannot come to school and she tells him to take good care of Zijin. She also tells her that it seems like the young master of Mu's family seems to never have a formal girlfriend, and he does not even have a female friend. Coco tells her to not think too much, as she does not have such type of relationship with him. 
She thinks that no matter how hard she tries, she still cannot try telling Xiang Xiang about what happened between Bi cares about Fei Fei Yu, but why did he still use her to stimulate Fei Fei? She's talking a bath and wonders if she can be clean if she washes herself more. Suddenly, Zijin gets inside the bathroom and Coco yells at him to get out. She gets out and he suddenly faints on her. She has no idea what's going on as she asks him what's wrong with him. In the hospital, the doctor states that Zijin suffered from gastroenteritis after he ate sweet food. He will recover after a few days of recuperation. There's nothing to worry about it. Zijin's parents are worried and Zijin's brother comes in asking how Zijin is doing. His brother name is Zichuan and parents tell him that Zijin is still sleeping. He looks towards Coco and asks her if she's the girl who stayed with Zijin alone in the hotel. His parents also stares towards Coco, and Coco replies that there's no relationship between them and she just happened to meet him. And now that they're here, she will go back to school. Zijin father asks Coco that which school she is studying in so he can get some days off for her. Otherwise, Zijin will ask for her and make trouble once he wakes up. He also thinks that Zijin is 27 years old, and Coco looks less than 20. Coco tells them they do not have to, and she'll ask her classmate to ask for a leave for her. Zijin's mother asks Zijin's father to not scare Zijin's girlfriend. He asks Zijin's mom to take good care of Zijin. Coco is sleeping when Zijin's mom asks Coco to persuade Zijin as he is crying to be discharged from the hospital and has even pulled the needle out. Zijin tells his mom that it's none of her business. Coco asks him why did he remove the needle when he's ill. He asks Coco why is she still here. Zijin's mom replies and says Coco took care of him all night yesterday and it was almost dawn when they asks a room for Coco to sleep in. She suddenly loses her senses and falls onto Zijin's lap. His mom tell him that in order to take care of him, she has become haggard. Zijin asks her if she's tired and if she had a good sleep. She tells him she's fine and if he's feeling better, to which he rubs her hair and replies he's feeling much better. Zichuan replies that Zijin is still ill and he should stay for two more days before leaving. And if he wishes to not want them to be there, he and mom will leave them alone. Zi Jin's mom agrees and asks Zi Jin's to listen to his older brother and tells him to stay here for two more days before he leaves. He tells them it's none of their businesses and he's fine now, so he can leave the hospital. His grandma asks Coco to persuade him. Coco tells him that he was badly ill last night and his illness may show effect again. It's better. He gently wipes the chocolate from her face and couldn't resist asking if it is delicious. She attempts to stomp her feet on his foot, but stops midway when he warns her about his shoes costing ten thousands of yuan. He then makes fun of her for falling for such an obvious lie. He then inquires if Zijin brought here. He warns her that his name might sound tempting, but isn't he aware that she is his woman? He then whispers into her ear that she has to go back to the Empire House with him tonight. After all, he really misses her these days. But Coco is hesitant to return with him to his office because of what happened last time. Coco finds Zijin standing there. She realizes Bei Ming did it on purpose. She's nervous and wonders if he heard what Bei Ming just said. Even though nothing is hidden from him, she can't help but feel embarrassed. Zijin's eyes sparkling with anger as he demands Bei Ming to take his hand off her girlfriend's waist. Bei Ming whispers to her in the ear that he just called her his girlfriend. He is surprised that the woman who was still in his arms two days ago became someone else's girlfriend two days later. Zijin grasps Bei Ming's hand tightly and warns him not to go too far. Bei Ming warns him not to touch his woman if he doesn't intend to be his enemy. Zijin inquiries from Coco if she is all right. Their interaction fuels his rage. He turns around to leave, but looks over the shoulder and reminds Coco that she has to go back to the Empire House with him, but Zijin clarifies that she won't go with him. The people are shocked that these two young masters almost fought for this woman, and they're afraid that the news will spread all over the city tomorrow. Coco trembles in fear as she thinks about how he demanded her to go to the Empire House tonight, but she provoked him, and now how will he torture her? Zijin assures her not to be scared as he won't let him bully her and ask her to come with him. He suggests that if she does some exercise, then she can forget all this displeasure. They run together, holding hands they stop when they reach backyard. Coco notices, and she abruptly breaks away from his hand. Coco admits that she used to hope that someone could protect her from Yebei Ming's harm. But now she's sober, and she knows no one can protect her out of this abyss. No one, including him.
He embraces Coco and asks for a chance to prove that he can. Coco aggressively demands him to let her go as she thinks she must make him give her up as no one can compete with Bei Ming and she cannot get him involved. But Zi Jin is adamant on making Coco his girlfriend and demands for a fair chance to compete with him. He finally confesses his love for her. He leans in, drawing his face closer for a kiss, as he expresses his wish for her to become his girlfriend. But she pushes him away. Determined, he pulls her back gently. Coco pleads with him to let her go. He regains his senses and apologizes for losing control and emphasizes what he said was true so she should believe him and to let him help her. Coco replies she doesn't know she wonders if she can trust him. He says he will give her time and wants to go back now. Coco is lost in her thoughts. She is scared that if she trusts him and he breaks her trust, she would not be able to trust any man again. That being the case, she believes it is better to not have any hope from the beginning. When they finally gather at the mansion to cut the cake, she is surprised to learn that she is the same girl she had encountered in the market, but Snow doesn't seem surprised and welcomes her. Lie. Nangong is also surprised that they both know each other. Coco inquires if she is Snow Nangong, the little princess of the family. She tells her that she never had intention of hiding it, but she never asked her and requests for help in cutting the cake. She then introduces Coco to his grandpa as her friend and expresses her wish about Coco cutting the cake. Now that she desires it, her grandpa requests Coco. She agrees to help, and she then notices Baming looking at her. She wonders why he came here. Zijin gifts her a harmonica that she is very delighted to receive and lets Zijin know that he didn't disappoint her. Baming inquires if it means they disappointed her. She ensures him that she really likes the gift, but she doesn't have a driver license. How is she going to drive? He suggests that the new friend she made should help her in driving. She then diverts his attention back to her, only to find her chatting with Zi Jin. She looks at his emotionless eyes, but reminds herself there is no need to be of Ye Bei Ming, as he has no right to interfere in her private life. It's almost as if Bei Ming can read her mind as he is determined to show her whether he has a right to her or not. Later, Coco and Snow are together in her room. Coco confronts Snow about hiding the truth from her. Now she is worried her family might mistake this coincidence as her impure motive, but she assures her that she will explain for her. She then jumps with excitement as she tells her that Big Brother Yi said she can't drive the car, but Coco can, and recommends going on a drive next time. She reveals that she doesn't have a driver license, and then inquires why she addresses him as Big Brother Ya. Yeah. She replies that he is the firstborn of the Baiming family, Second born is brother Shun, and this one's brother Lianchen, and the last born is sister Dai Dai. She teases to get off her as she is heavy. She thinks to herself that Dai Dai Bei Ming is the one who had accompanied Fei Fan. Snow refuses to get off her as she smells just like her mother. Lai Nangong recommends not disturbing them as it is rare for Snow to be happy. They overhear Snow requesting Coco to marry her brother Lia Nangong so she will not have to leave her in the future. A nervous Lai Nangong explains that it is just a child's babble, and it has nothing to with her. But Bei Ming reminds her that he is famous for spoiling her sister. Lai Nangong raises his hands in defeat, accepting that he is no match for her. He also thinks to himself whether the encounter between Coco and Snow was a coincidence or her intention. Bei Ming enters the room. He finds her laying on the bed and questions if it's her hobby dressing like this in front of the men. He reaches for her, but suddenly the memory of him tearing her dress reaches her mind and haunts her. Before she could realize, she slaps him across the face. When she gets her senses back, she realizes Baming just wanted to zip up her dress. No emotions apparent on his face as he questions if she slapped him. She starts panicking. Snow intervenes and tries to explain on Coco's behalf, but he assures her that he is just joking with her, and she is just helping him kill the mosquitoes. But Kuko knows from his tone and awful smile that he is not joking. Lai Nangong lifts Snow on her shoulder and makes an excuse that Grandpa is looking for him. Snow protests to not bully her friend and accuses her brother of deliberately taking her away who denies the allegations. She then expresses her desire for Coco to become her sister-in-law. But Li Nangong reminds her that he is never going to marry or have a baby all his life. She advises him to grow up and that people have to marry and start their family. He reminds her he is just 11 years older than her. And isn't it better that he just protects her for the rest of his life 
She warns him she will solely hold him responsible if Coco is bullied. Meanwhile, Baming orders Coco to get up and go to the Empire House with him. She refuses, thinking she can't give him a chance to humiliate her anymore. He lifts her up in his arms and inquires if she is not. She pleads with him not to touch her, and she will pay him back. He inquires how she is going to pay two billion or if she is considering asking Zi Jin. He touches her lips. He has heard that she and Zi Jing were alone in the backyard for so long it slightly annoys him. She bites his finger, but he doesn't seem... It's Zi Jin inquiring if Coco is there before Coco could answer. Bei Ming covers her mouth. He says it's really late, and he needs to drop her back to school. He reaches for the door handle, but stops, bringing to mind that he can't break into Snow's bedroom, and he just wants to confirm whether Coco was taken away by Ye. Coco is not with her, but with Bei Ming. Bei Ming asks if she wants to go out now. Coco rushes to him and says no as she is scared of being seen by Snow like that. She agrees to go back to the Empire House with him. He asks her if it is voluntary. She replies with a yes. She then requests for his help and not let Snow see her like that. He picks her up and she inquires what he is going to do to her shock he is planning on jumping from a window. While Zijin knocks on the door asking her if she is there, Coco thinks that if they jump, they might die, but at least it will save her from this foreseeable embarrassment. Baiming instructs her to hold him tight and jumps out of the window. Feel free to let us know in the comments if there's any manhwa you would like us to recap. Stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for the latest updates. Until next time, goodbye.